Lesson 3 A Catastrophe Let's get going. Have you heard stories of how the rich and the powerful often exploit and rescue the weak and the helpless? Do you think it is possible to bring such people to book and make them realize how cruel and heartless the treatment of the poor is? Read to understand. Read the story of a poor defenseless woman who was tormented and driven to her death by an arrogant tyrant who was totally insensitive to her precious cries. But he meets his own nemesis, for providence sees that justice is done. In the Banaras district, there is a village called Brera in which an old, childless widow used to live. She was a kind woman named Pungi, and she didn't own either scrap of land or a house to live in. Her only source of livelihood was a perching oven. The village folk customarily have one meal a day of parched grains. So there was always a crowd around Bhungi's oven. Whatever grains she was paid for perching, she would grind or fry and eat it. She slept in a corner of the same little shack that sheltered the oven. As soon as it was light, she'd get up and go out to gather dry leaves from all around to make her fire. She would stack the leaves right next to the oven and after twelve light the fire. But on the days when she had to perch green for the Pandit Udaibhan Pandey, the owner of the village, she went to bed hungry. She was obliged to work without pay for Pandit Udaibhan Pandey. She also had to fetch water for his house. And for this reason, from time to time the oven was not lit. She lived in Pandit's village. Therefore, he had full authority to make her do any sort of odd job. In his opinion, if she received food for working for him, how could it be considered as work done without pay. He was doing her a favor. In fact, by letting her live in the village, it was spring, a day on which the fresh cream was fried and eaten and given as a gift. No oven is lit in the houses. Bhungi's oven was being put to good use today. There was a crowd worthy of a village fair around her. She had scarcely had an opportunity to draw breath because of the customer's impatience. Scrapples keep breaking out. Then two servants arrived, each carrying a heap basket of grain from Pandit Udaibhan, with the order to perch it right away. When Bhungi saw the two baskets, she was alarmed. It was already past twelve and even by sunset. She would not have time to purge so much grain. Now she would have to stay at the oven perching until after dark for no payment. In this pyre, she took the two baskets. One of the funkies said menacingly, Don't waste any time or you'll be sorry. With this command, the servants went away and Bhungi began to purge the grain. It's no laughing matter to purge a whole mound of grain. She had to keep stopping from the purging in order to keep the oven fire going. So by sundown, not even half the work was done. She was afraid that Panditji's man would be coming. She began to move her hands all the more frantically. Soon the servants returned and said, Well, is the grain purged? Feeling bold, Bhungi said, Can't you see? I am purging it now. The whole day is gone and you haven't finished any more grain than this. Have you been roasting it or spoiling it? This is completely unlocked. How is it going to be used for food? It's the ruin of us. You will see. 
what Panditji does to you for this. The result was that night, the oven was dug up and Bhungi was left without a means of livelihood. Bhungi now had no means of support. The villagers suffered a good deal too from the restriction of oven. In many houses, even at noon, cooked creel was no longer available. People went to Panditji and asked him to give the order for the old woman's oven to be rebuilt and the fire once more lighted. But he paid no attention to them. He could not suffer a loss of face. A few people who wished her well urged her to move to another village. But her heart would not accept this suggestion. She had spent fifty miserable years of her life in this village, and she loved every leaf of every tree. Here she had none the sorrows and pleasures of life. She could not give it up now in her last days. The very idea of moving distressed her. Sorrow in this village was preferable to happiness in another. A month went by. Very early, one morning Pandit Udaibhan, taking his little band of servants with him, went out to collect his rents. Now when he looked towards the old woman's oven, he fell into a violent rage. It was being made again. Bhungi was energetically rebuilt it with balls of clay. Most likely she spent the night at this work and wanted to finish it before the sun was high. She knew that she was going against the Pandit's wishes. But she hoped that he had forgotten his anger by then. But alas, the poor creature had grown old without growing wise. Suddenly Panditji shouted, By whose order? Bewildered, Bhungi saw that he was standing before her. He demanded once again, By whose order are you building it? In a fit of fright, she said, Everybody said I should build it. And so I am building it. I'll have it smashed again. With this, he kicked the oven. The wet clay collapsed in a heap. He kicked at the throw again. But she ran in front of it and took the cake in her side. Rubbing her ribs, she said, Maharaj, you are not afraid of anybody, but you ought to fear God. What good does it do to you, you and me like this? Do you think gold is going to go throughout of this small piece of land? For your own good, I am telling you, don't torment poor people. Don't be the death of me. You are not going to build any oven here again. If I don't, how I am going to be able to eat? I am not responsible for your belly. But if I do nothing except choose for you, where will I go for food? If you are going to stay in the village, you'll have to do my chores. I'll do them when I've built my oven. I can't do your work just for the sake of staying in the village. Then don't. Just get out of the village. How can I? I've grown old in this hut. My in-laws and their grandparents lived in the same hut. Except for your Yama, king of death, nobody is going to force me out of it now. Excellent. Now you are quitting the scriptures. Pandit Udaibhan said, If you'd work hard, I might have let you stay. But after this, I won't rest until I've had you thrown out. To his attendants, he said, Go get a pile of leaves right away and set fire to the whole thing. We'll show her how to make an oven. In a moment, there was a tremendous racket. The flames leaped towards the sky. The blaze spread wildly in all directions till the villagers came clustering around this mountain of fire. Hopelessly, Bhungi stood by her oven watching the conflagration. Suddenly, with a violent dash, she hurled herself into the flames. They came running from everywhere. But no one had the courage to go into the mouth of the place. In a matter of seconds, 
Her white-earth body was completely consumed. At that moment, the wind rose with a gust. The liberated flames began to race towards the east. There were some peasants' huts near the oven which were engulfed by the fire's flames. Fed in this way, the blaze spread even further. Panditji barn was in its path, and it pounced upon it. By now, the whole village was in a panic. They began to band together to put out the fire, but the sprinkle of water acted like oil on it, and the flames kept mounting higher. Pandit Uday Bhans' splendid mansion was swallowed up. While he watched, it rose like a ship amid wild waves, and disappeared in the sea of fire. The sound of lamentation that broke out amidst the ashes was even more pitiful than Bhungi's grievous cries.